morning, New Life Church, children and friends. It's so good to be back with you again this morning. It is such a joy to be um, sharing God's word with you, children. We miss you and we cannot wait to see you all again as we fellowship. So let's remember what we were doing last week. Can you remember? Well, we started reading the story, The Biggest Story. And it's how the snake crusher brings us back to the garden. And it was written by Kevin DeYoung and illustrated by John Clark. And we have been so enjoying this book as a family. And we wanted to share this with you as well. So last week in chapter one, can you remember what we looked at? In chapter one, we saw God, Adam and and Adam and Eve, didn't we? And what happened in the Garden of Eden? Well, God had to tell Adam and Eve to leave the garden because they were sinful. They were not holy like God and they had to leave the garden. They had to be told to leave because of the sin that they had chosen to do. But we know that at the end of that story, we heard that God made a promise. He made a promise to his people that he would crush that snake and he would bring his people back to him. And that's where we we ended at the end of last week. So let's go on to chapter two. Chapter two. And let's see how the story continues of God fulfilling his promise to his people. Let's start reading together. Sadly, things got a lot worse before they got any better. Adam and Eve had several children, including two brothers named Cain and Abel. Abel trusted God, but Cain did not. And when God accepted Abel's gift and not Cain's, Cain got very angry, so angry, so hurt, and so jealous that he killed his brother. It was the first murder in history, but it wouldn't be the last. Things were not the way they were supposed to be. Everything fell apart after sin entered the world. Things got so bad so fast that God decided to start over. The people on the earth were terribly wicked in their hearts all the time, every day, nonstop. They didn't deserve to enjoy God's world anymore. So God took it from them. Or more exactly, he took them from it. He sent a flood that wiped out everyone and everything because it had been stained with sin. Now, you know that story, don't you, children? That's the story of Noah, isn't it? Well, almost everything, God, everything, he destroyed almost everything. But God saved what? He saved one family on the earth. One family that trusted him and believed what he said. Noah and his wife and their sons and their wives were spared. They lived for a lot of days with a lot of animals in a big boat called an ark. And it rained and rained for many days, didn't it? God was going to start over with his creation. He was angry with the world that hated him. But he still was at work to save the world that he loved. That's why he rescued Noah and his family. God wanted his people to, he wanted to give his people another chance. God was going to start over with a new world and Noah was going to be a new kind of Adam. The problem was that Noah was too much like the first Adam. It didn't take long after they got out of the boat for Noah to do some pretty bad stuff himself. He trusted God enough to build an ark when everyone laughed at him, but it turned out He could be just as foul and sinful as everyone else. 
every one of Noah's sons got, even one of Noah's sons got cursed, just like every one, everything got cursed back in the garden. History was repeating itself, whether it was Adam or Noah. The first world in the beginning or the second world after the flood, people just could not get it right. One time, a whole bunch of people got together to build a giant tower. Do you remember what that tower was called? It's the Tower of Babel. Remember that? They thought they could build all the way up to heaven. But it must, but it must not have been all that big because God had to come down from heaven to see it. And when God saw it, he was not pleased. Everyone was working together, which was okay, but they weren't working for God. And that was not okay. They were trying to show how smart and impressive they could be all on their own. They thought they did not need God. So God mixed up their languages and scattered the people all over the place. Things were still not going well in the world that God had made. But thankfully, God was still not done saving his people. Wow. We saw three different stories in this one story, didn't we? But let us ask ourselves those two questions that I said is important to ask when we are listening to a story or reading something. Who is the story about and what happened? So who is our story about today? Well, it's about God and it's about sinful man. God and sinful man. And we saw three examples of Cain and Abel, Noah, and then the people who built the Tower of Babel who could not get it right. They could not obey God as much as they tried. But what do we see God doing? No matter how much God's people were messing up and getting things wrong. God is faithfully still trying to save his people. Is God giving up on his creation? No. Is God giving up on his people? No. God is keeping that promise that we learned about in the first chapter. And we're going to continue seeing that throughout the story as we, we progress with the chapters. Children, let us remember that our God is a faithful God. I want to read a verse from Exodus chapter 34 for us today. Chapter 34, verses 6, and it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed. Now this is what the Lord said about himself. The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins, but who will by no means clear the guilty. Children, we know that God is loving and faithful, that he will judge our sin as he says he needs to. And we saw that in our stories. But we know that our faithful God is keeping his promise to his children. And I pray that you will hear that. No matter how unfaithful, sinful man was being, our God is faithful. And he's keeping our pro his promise to us. Well, I pray the story will start to move in your heart for, your, for you to understand exactly who our God is and who we are as his people. Blessings, children. I pray that you'll enjoy doing the activities that Auntie Estelle sent out for you. And I pray that you will learn much more about these stories and others that the word has to share about us. Remember, our God is faithfully fulfilling his promise to his children. Lots of love. See you soon. And we're praying for you.